Hello and welcome to What a Deck, the most bird brained Yu Gi Oh! show. I'm your host, Hardleg Joe, and today we're playing KFC, that Konami fried chicken, also known as Neftis Advantage, brought to you by Patreon sponsor 01503, who wanted to see what I could do with this archetype of fiery birds and the girls that worship them. Now I'm going to be playing 10 duels against random opponents on EDO Pro, just testing this out, showing you how it works, giving you the old Neftis experience. And if you want to skip ahead to that, there should be chapter codes down on the little search bar, or whatever it's called. First, though, I should probably go over this archetype and explain how it works for people who have no idea what Neftis do. So Neftis as a whole is what I would charitably call an advantage deck which means its win condition is not necessarily about setting up a specific board state or summoning a specific boss monster, but more about grinding the game out in such a way that you get more resources than your opponent over time. The Neftis do this basically with destruction. They've got a couple boss monsters that destroy a whole bunch of cards, and then they've got all their littler cards that gain effects when they're destroyed. So your cards are going to be coming back, floating, getting you advantage, while you're slowly destroying your opponent's board over and over again. This doesn't work very well for the Neftis, because they have a time-delayed factor to them. Most of the Neftis effects say, when this is destroyed, during your next standby phase, do a thing. So you have to be able to survive for a turn first, and then next turn, you can kind of get the ball rolling as far as gaining more advantage. That's why, in this case, I decided to break away from my normal rules. Usually when I play a deck, I try to use a pure variant of it, something that shows off what that archetype can do on its own. Or if I do use outside support, it's to support that archetype's playstyle. In this case, though, I have a combo that uses Conductor of Neftis and Diviner of the Herald, along with some Morgue and a couple other things, to make this first turn lockdown that's nearly impossible to beat. I think there's only a couple cards in the game that can get through it, although one of those is Dark Ruler No More and the other one is Forbidden Droplet, so... Um, they're the most played cards in the game, but if your opponent doesn't open with that, they might not be able to beat it. I won't go over it here because I'm sure you'll be seeing it a whole bunch in the episode. Hopefully I can get that out numerous times because it's fairly consistent. While this isn't searchable, this thing is searchable all over the place. It's either this or the, uh, the ritual spell. If you get either one of these and then Diviner of the Herald, it's a two card combo to make this nigh unbeatable board. So we're going to be focusing on that, trying to get this, this sort of super combo out. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to rely on the rest of the Neftis stuff to sort of destroy cards, uh, just gain that advantage like I was saying. It's not the best we may brick, especially because we're playing this, which is very, very silly, but also very funny when it goes off. So the Wicked Eraser is a card that says a lot of things, but the only important one for us is that when it's destroyed, it destroys all other cards on the field. It's a field nuke. And all of these small Neftis cards destroy a card in your hand in order to activate their effects. So if we get this, which destroys a card to search, and this, we can start by nuking our opponent's field and while getting advantage at the same time, and then hopefully go into our combos. That's if we're going second. If we're going first, this isn't all that useful, but the fact that it's just a two-card combo means that we can hold on to it, and if our opponent makes any sort of comeback, we always have this entire board wipe to fall back on, which also searches us some stuff. Most of it you'll be seeing in the actual video, and if you want an in-depth breakdown, I'll be doing that at the halfway point. Again, you can use the chapter features. If you want to know why I'm playing, what I'm playing, what the hell this is doing in here, what all these one-ofs are, I'll explain that there. Otherwise, like I said, 10 duels against random opponents. Let's try this out, and hopefully... We'll have a little fun. <laughs> Alright, here we are. First duel versus Psychroid pair. We get to go first. Will we get a hand that allows us to do the combo? Uh, no. We can't do the full combo, but we can still do some pretty good stuff. So let's start with the preparations of rites. This will get us the ritual spell, 
And uh, we already got a devotee, but let's just go ahead and take another one. And then what we're going to do is normal summon this Disciple of Neftis. This, as I said in the intro, can destroy a card in your hand to search a Neftis card. And we're going to search Conductor of Neftis. There's a reason she's foremost on the sleeves. When Bao Baboon is destroyed, it'll summon two more Bao Baboons from the deck, which is why we play it. That and when these are summoned, they allow you to draw a card and then put a card on the top or bottom of your deck. So they let you reset your hand so that you're more likely to get your combo. You only really have like two normal summons. So if you don't get the combo, okay, we're putting that on the bottom of the deck. Then this can be pretty good. Um, I don't think we need two of these, so we'll put that on the bottom of the deck. Better to have this. Actually, I think we might be able to do the combo with the Monster Reborn. So, normally we could use these two to make Cicada King, but I don't think we want to in this case. Just let me think about... Or yeah, actually we do have to do that, otherwise we won't have enough room. Cicada King, just a monster negate. It's just a dang old monster negate. <laughs> and then we're going to uh, Ritual Summon. We're going to summon Conductor using this. If you use that as material, you get to pop a card. Which is awesome, but we're not going to do that because we're going first. And then this, when it's Ritual Summoned, lets you Ritual Summon a Neftis from the deck. So we're going to pick the Devotee. Devotee, when it's Ritual Summoned, lets you Summon a Neftis from the deck. <laughs> Just insane amounts of advantage on this. And we're going to get the Matriarch of Neftis for later. So then we're going to take our two Ritual Monsters and we're going to make our Link 2. There we go. This will allow us to search. We can get a level 8 monster. Level 8 Neftis. I don't know exactly what the thing, but one of these two. I'm going to pick this one. And it'll allow us to get our ritual spell out of the graveyard, which is only important because uh, we need to destroy stuff for our effects. So we're going to, we're going to use this. We can destroy a card in our hand to summon a card from the graveyard. So we're blowing up that. We're summoning that, and then because this is a winged beast, we can use these two to make Simorg. The good old Simorg. Um, this can summon itself out of the graveyard by destroying a card in the hand. So we'll get that. We'll use these two, and we're going to go ahead and make IP Masquerina. And then because we've got the Monster Reborn, we can do the whole thing of the combo. We can bring back whatever, doesn't matter. This. And then we're going to use those two to make Phoenix. It doesn't really matter what we're going to make. The only reason we need two extra deck monsters is so we can go into Crusadia Knight Avramax. And then during the end phase, this summons a Winged Beast from the deck. So we will summon... Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds. This says your opponent can't special summon except for wind. This thing says none of your winged beasts can be targeted for card effects. Ah, nice. Super Heavy Samurai. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I won this. I'll just explain why I've won this. So, yeah, that's fine. They just served <laughs> Yeah, so this this is the super combo. If your opponent has no hand traps, if they can't stop you and you can make this, you pretty much just doomed them. Because this says, your, again, your opponent can't target winged beasts, so neither of these can be targeted with card effects. This by itself says it just can't be targeted by card effects. That's just a natural quality. So your opponent can't target anything. They can't special summon monsters, except for wind, very few wind decks. And if they want to try to run over this by battle, Avramax says your opponent can only attack Avramax. And Avramax, if, it, if a special summoned monster attacks it, it gains attack equal to that monster's attack. So say they have, I don't even know what you would summon, some sort of wind monster that has like 3,000 attack and you want to try to crash into Avramax, he gains the 3,000. It's just this absolutely brutal lock where if you don't have Dark Ruler no more to just blanket negate everything, or you don't have um, Forbidden Droplet to like negate that without targeting it, you're just kind of doomed. Now, what makes this kind of better than something like, say, Tri-Brigade? Because Tri-Brigade can do this same combo. Um, or, I guess, Bird Up might be able to. Lira Loose, where's my graveyard? Is that during our combo, we destroyed a whole bunch of Neftis cards. 
This card says, if it was destroyed, then during my next standby phase, it summons itself back and wipes all back row on the field. This thing, the thing that lets us destroy any card in our hand to revive anything, summons itself back uh, during the end phase, or during the next standby phase. So we're automatically getting two cards, one of which can revive any card, this can revive stuff. So just the fact that if they manage to wipe this board, we're not just dead like so many combo decks. We are actually getting some stuff back that will net us more advantage and allow us to continue our plays. And if I get the Wicked Eraser, then I can nuke the field for fun. And nuking the field doesn't really hurt me because, again, if I nuke everything, my cards are just going to come back again during the next standby phase. So that's the basic plan of it. How often we can go first and how often we can get that combo is going to be a huge determinator in whether or not this will actually work. So we'll see. We'll see as we go into duel number two. <laughs> Alright, starting off duel number two already with my arch nemesis player. We get to go first again. Do we get the combo? Yes, I believe we do if this doesn't get Ash Blossomed. Or not the complete combo. That's the big thing, is you, you need the Herald to get the complete combo, but... Just getting this and a Ritual Monster already gives you quite a bit you can do. So, let's go ahead. This, using this... We do not want to destroy anything. This will be not the perfect combo. This won't be unbeatable, but it will give us some resources, and we can at least use it to get things started. So let's bring out, again, the Matriarch. You only play this at two. You really kind of want to summon it from the deck. You don't want to get started with it. And it's going to start a lot of the same way. We're going to get this. We're going to use this to search... This can also destroy a Neftis it points to to summon one from the graveyard with its effects negated. I'm not really certain how useful that would be. I don't think I've ever actually used it. So we get that. We're going to go ahead and use this. Um, summon back. It doesn't really matter. We just want to destroy this in our hand, so we'll get it next turn. So we summon that, and then we're going to make the Samorg. And then, because we don't have anything to protect the barrier statue, we're going to go with our other target this time. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. So, during the end phase, again, this can summon any winged beast. So we're going to go for the Apex Avian. This is when a card or effect is activated, you can return a Mist Valley card to your hand. And then if you do, negate the activation and destroy it. And this is a, this is a Mist Valley card. Alright, they're starting off with a Hero Lives. Do we want to do that and hope nothing else in their hand just gets them started? Or do we want to wait for something that threatens us? Uh, I think we're going to wait for something that threatens us. If they're playing heroes, it's likely they're playing, like, the Phoenix Enforcer, and we do not want that on the field. That will be able to out-resource us far, far stronger than we can out-resource ourselves. Plus, fortunately, this can't be targeted, so it's harder for them to get into things. So, let's go for that. Yeah, Hero's pretty strong OTK deck. I believe the Ferris is usually what you want to negate, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, but they got the Malicious into the grave. Um... Yeah, so you get the Ferris. The Ferris allows you to... Get the thing. And then that can tribute off something. I believe if I'm going to stop them, this is the best place to stop them. So let's try it. Hopefully they just don't have, like, de f uh, Destiny Fusion in their hand. Because either way, if I, if I just let them build a board without contesting it, they're just going to walk over everything. Yep, and they had the Vion, so that gives them the Polymerization. And there's the other Destiny heroes, so they are probably going to make Fusion Enforcer. The real question is, can they OTK us through these two monsters? If they can, then, well, you know, we're just dead. If they can't, we have the Dark Hole, we have the monsters coming back, we have this, which can recover any card from the Graveyard, 
We have the Ritual Summon and this. If we use this as Ritual Material, again, we get a non-targeting pop. So we might be able to do stuff. Hard to say, really. So we'll just be back once they get to the battle phase, and we'll see if they can uh, annihilate our life points or not. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I am not sure exactly. Fortunately, they didn't make the thing that, like, um, whatchamacallit... Just absolutely, there's a, there's a monster that does piercing and gives all his monsters attack, and he didn't make it, which is good, because he would have been able to absolutely devastate. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seventy. Oh yeah, he's already got it. Unfortunate, but that's, that's the cost of this deck. Like I said, it's, it's, uh, it, if it doesn't get the full combo, you could put up like a little bit of negate, but if that's not enough to stop you from getting completely OTK'd, then you're just gonna you're just gonna die before you have a chance to get any advantage. I'm wondering now if it would have been better. Grand, they would have been able to extend farther if I didn't try to stop them with Apex Avian. But I wonder if it would have been the better move to just leave 2,700 attack on the field, so it was more that they had to beat over. Hard to say, hard to leg. Either way, let's go ahead into the third duel. All right, here we are, duel number three versus testing. High five, high five, fist. Oh, they just kept with the paper strat. I gotta remember, paper, then scissors. That's how, oh, they let me go first anyway. All right, once again, we have not drawn Herald yet. But once again, we have drawn this and other stuff. We can search out the, um, the conductor. Using the Bow Baboon and at least end on a Cicada King, if nothing else. Probably not gonna get the full combo unless these Baboons just happen to get us into Monstery Born again, but that's a one of, so highly unlikely. And now that you've seen that exact combo, I'm not sure if I want to show off the, the same thing. Either way, get this out of our hand. Whatever we're drawing, yeah, that's definitely better. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I think we want to put this on the bottom. Okay, so we can make the Cicada King. Hello. We can go ahead and do our conductor line. What's neat is if you didn't have this to summon, you can normal summon Bow Baboon and then use this destruction to blow it up. Not sure if we'll see that this time, but it's certainly something you could do. Let's go for this. Into the dang old... Uh, where was it? Matriarch. Yep, the beginnings of the combo always kind of go the same. Although, if you want, I could just right now go ahead and make, um... Like a format Appaloosa... Start on that, just hope they have all monster effects. Um, and oh, yeah, in this case, I want to use these two because 2000. Hey, let's go ahead and search. Let's get this, and we'll add the ritual spell back. Just advantage city, getting all the advantage all the time. Uh oh, did testing freeze? Did my combos scare them too much? Hard to say. Hard to leg. Oh no, it's just lagging or something. Strange. Um, okay. Activate this. Let's... Let's summon this one back, shall we? Yeah. Summon this back by destroying the Neftis, which is less about getting something on the field and more about just destroying something in general. Just so we have something. A follow-up play of some kind. I mean, we also have this. This will get us a ritual spell and a uh, monster. So you can perhaps ritual summon again next turn. Very nice. I wonder why it's lagging so much. Edo Pro lagging. Strange. Even the words are lagging. Ooh. Hopefully I don't time out or something. Okay, and then we're just going to use these two to make this. 
Most of the Neftis effects are when they're destroyed by card effects specifically. This one is the only one that has a destroyed by battle, I believe. Oh no, it's tributed or destroyed by a Neftis card effect. Never mind. It's got 2,000 attack. That's why I'm leaving it here. And we've got the Apex Avian. Got 2,000 attack, 200 defense, and 2 negates. Slightly better than last time. Hopefully we'll be able to outgrind, unlike the hero duel. Okay, leading off with the Pot of Desires, that's fine. No idea what you're going for, but I when you only have two negates, you really want to save them for something that can maybe hurt us. Oh. Oh. Um. I don't think I want them to get Kaijus, because that'll stop everything that I want to do. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and stop that. No Kaya 2 waterfront for you. No getting the tokens. I don't want you searching no kaijus. Nope. At least they destroyed everything. That means I'll be getting stuff in the standby phase. Yeah, I should have known if they were playing that kaiju, they were probably playing more kaiju stuff. Although if this is what, a pure kaiju deck, I don't think I have a whole lot to worry about. Not the strongest archetype, it can only really put one monster on the field at a time. Unless, I don't know, kaiju in, uh, invoked. Maybe normal summon Alistair after this. What am I getting? Yeah, this lag, really weird. What's up with EDO Pro? Yep, turtle power. Should have expected it. Okay, going for the Supply Squad. Not something you usually see. Oh, okay, it's great old Kaijus. This is a really old deck. So I guess you're taking about 700 to draw a card. That's probably worth it. You don't get to steal the Kaiju because you can only control one Kaiju. So if they run over that, then they're just, they're just doomed. What else could they be doing, though? All right, going to battle phase. Are they going to attack with the eagle just to just to take a little bit? Yep, just to get it off my field and draw a card. And then attack directly for 3,300, I guess. That's good for me, though. I didn't have an easy way to get rid of this. If this is destroyed by monster effects, then, um... And it gets to steal a monster. And most of my cards are like destroying stuff with monster effects, so not not the not the best matchup for this. Hopefully they set a whole bunch more spell traps and stuff. Just completely forget about the things I have coming back. Yes! Yes! Some more supply squad! Okay, standby phase time. Let's go ahead. Sacred to Phoenix. Comes back, wipes your spell traps, get that shit out of my face. And then Disciple of Neftis gets me a uh, Neftis spell trap. Which would be good if I didn't already have two of the, the ritual spells. Oh, they lost connection. A sad state of affairs. Yeah, and I could have... Actually, I'm not sure exactly what I could have done. I think I might have had a way to get to the, the other level 8 ritual. Hard to say. Either way, we'll take that win where we can get it, for whatever reason. And let's go ahead to the fourth duel. <laughs> Alright, here we are, duel number four versus Nicorette Gum? Interesting. I guess this episode is sponsored? I'm not trying to sponsor no gum, I tell you what. My gum of choice is, uh, Trident. I didn't know what- I didn't know what my gum of choice was, but I knew- I knew I liked that kind. Alright, Awful Hand. Absolutely dreadful. Bow Baboon, you're gonna have to do a lot of work, buddy. Bow Baboon into Bow Baboon, I see. <laughs> well, sometimes it's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, we can at least search. Let's get one of these. I can't use it, but we'll have it. Pain. <laughs> Monkey, yep. Those first couple duels showed how the Bow Baboons can be really useful if you get the cards that let you destroy them. 
if you don't, you're just kind of screwed. And yeah, this wicked eraser, like, man, I, it's it's worth it if we can get the situation where we can use it. But, um, oof, there's so many times when this really probably should be an Ash Blossom or a Torrential Tribute or something. That would probably be the smart move. But the way I see it, I'm already playing a goofy as fuck deck. Might as well play, like, one of the weirdest tech cards that you could possibly imagine. And by the way, there, there is an Earthbound Immortal that does the same thing. Um, the only reason I'm playing this over that is because this, I could summon it. I can, uh, I can, it, I can be normal summoned by attributing three monsters. So, if I get three monsters on the field, I might be able to do something with it. Um, it's very unlikely, but the Earthbound Immortal requires a field spell to be summoned. So... I don't have any field spells, so there's 0% chance I could summon that, and like a 2% chance I might want to summon this. Maybe like a 0.2%. But there's still a chance, is what I'm saying. Either way, it looks like we've got some sort of weird zombie resonator, Hauk combo, I don't know. We're probably dead. I mean, the one benefit to this is if they destroy Bao Baboon, it summons two more from the deck. So they have to chew through at least three monsters or waste some non-destruction removal on this. So I might, just might, be able to survive. Only the battle phase will be able to tell for sure. <laughs> no. The answer is no. I'm, I'm very glad. They're going to be able to load a lot of damage. This can attack twice on monsters. I learned that during the Chaos Draft. And they can hit me for 4,500, which is probably the best route. Unless I got something they can summon in the, the, the battle phase. I don't think that's the situation. There's not a lot of monsters that summon in the battle phase that aren't like hand traps like a battle fader or whatever. We will see though. Again, I don't know, maybe I need to reset, reset my EDO Pro. They seem to be taking an awful lot of time to figure this out. I don't think they're actually thinking... I think uh, EDO Pro is just lagging, having a bit of that lag-tastic journey. Hopefully Master Duel doesn't... Oh, come on. Come on! I'm not sure if I can count that one. That definitely doesn't seem like they surrendered. That seems like something happened, because why would you surrender when you have, like, a decent board like that? They have Disruption, they have other stuff. Uh, I guess we're just going to find a real fourth duel. I won't count that. This and the previous one will be counted together as one. And I'm going to reset EDO Pro. <laughs> All right, here we are, the real fourth duel versus Ho Height, And we get to go first and... Still nothing. Still not a dang old thing. This is the worst hand yet. Oof. Brick, brick, brick. Yeah, this is a one of. It lets us uh, get a card out of the graveyard, which is good for recovery and not good in this specific situation. Got no way to get to our ritual spell. None of our normal summonable monsters. Nothing. Just literally, like, we're just gonna have to set this and hope we can survive. Oof. I swear, this, uh, if we, we're gonna get to the fifth duel and never get the actual combo. Well, that's unfortunate. Power of the Guardians. And this has to go to the graveyard. So I think we've just been outplayed, unfortunately. Because I can't destroy this now with Dark Hole. And we could do this. But we kind of need our graveyard. It's not just destroyed. It's destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Um... Yeah, we could do this, though. Um, let's see, if the equipped monster would be destroyed, you can remove one spell counter from this. Okay, but this itself can't be destroyed. Uh, okay, so you can. You must also tribute monsters who's equal, then, if you tributed... Okay, so we'll go ahead and activate this over here, just in case. Solemn warning! And I can't recover it. I can't recover it. That would have been my one thing. This would have been able to destroy the, the back row. 
Um, yeah, and I could activate that, and they would just remove one spell counter, so it's, like, not even worth it. Uh, alright. Hard counter with the Solemns up in here. Yep, and just stopping the special summons. Moon Mirror Shield. If only I had gotten my combo. Oh, you would be in such worse position. The world would be my oyster. Yeah, I'm gonna have to activate it just to get rid of this and also prevent that from doing anything. Well, at least we got another one of these. Okay, so we activate this. We get this and this. We can dark hole. They'll remove a counter, that gets destroyed. And then we've just gotta hope they don't have another fucking solemn morning. Okay, good. We'll use this, using that. Unfortunate that it's banished. And then in resolution, we can destroy a card on the field. That lets us summon infinite impermanence. Well, we still have 2,000 to your 1,600, so I can at least get this off the field. And because of your own vanishing, you can't get the Moon Mirror Shield back or the Power of the Guardians. We're not in a great position. If they have another Moon Mirror Shield, I'm probably doomed. But at least we can hopefully keep our stuff. Okay, face down. So that's probably the Photon Papal Operative. Three in a row! What can I say? <laughs> just opening, just getting all the preparations of rights. All right. So, we can activate this, we can, what would this be, eight, two, no, we need to do the other one, use this, using this, and that'll allow us to pop the face down card without having to do anything. Ah, the wind barrier statue, and I'm a wind monster! Okay, in this case, because they don't have a whole lot, I don't really, I'm not really concerned with doing the combo. So, I'm just gonna get Sacred Phoenix of Neftis right here. And, um... We're just good. Oh, they surrendered. Oh, they just surrendered. We did it. We did it because... <laughs> so, we got, like, the worst hand possible, and then drew three pre-preparations of rights in a row. Just absolutely stunning. But yeah, what's that? 24, tw 2, 3, 4, 50... Oh, that's exactly game! That's exactly game. Never mind. We don't have to prepare for anything. We did it. We got him. Let's go ahead into the fifth duel. See if we can get our that herald. <laughs> All right. Duel number five versus Nemesis 2.1. Watch. We Okay, we didn't get the herald again. Zero heralds. I guess in the halfway point, I'm just going to have to do, do the combo. It's popular these days. I tell you what. Let's go ahead and activate this. And just sort of like, you know, unfortunately for you, unfortunately for you, I just happen to be a wind deck. Oh? Nephthys? What are the chances? What are the chances? Well, I've got the good opening. Unfortunately, I got the pre-prep. What you gonna do? Okay. So, yeah. We'll go ahead and get this. Summoning this. Yeah, just so we can pop the card. Just allow us to do things. Go this, into this, into... We haven't normal summoned yet, so we're gonna get this. We're going to use this to pop this to get this. Link. You know it. You know it. 
Gotta have the links. Gotta have my pops. Get this. And add the ritual spell back. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is in defense position. I think I could still do it. Okay, so let's... It's Rebirth of Neftis. Summon this using the Sacred Phoenix. Kakal, I'm a bird. Let's go ahead and activate this. Let's get a Conductor, and this will allow us to get our Ritual Spell back out of the graveyard. You have Discord. Jaw. Uh, let's see. Three, four, five... Six, seven. Yeah, so I just Ritual Summon the... It's Nemesis, <laughs> three, four, three, and you. Um... Do I want to share it on here? Uh, I can't look it up at the moment. I've got Discord closed at the moment. So I can't see it. Don't want to open it. Sorry. But you can find me for these. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to advertise things. It's fine, it's fine. We've got game anyway. It's okay. Another time. You familiar with hard leg gaming? I'm on his Discord. <laughs> I'm on his Discord. You should check it out. You know, he's making a Nephthys deck too. Gonna be out next week. Keep an eye out for it. None of this is untrue. Very technically, I follow the Aes Sedai way. Wait, do you got a you got a battle fader or something? Indeed. Sometimes that's the way the chicken crumbles. Or something. I don't know. What do you think I am? Clever? Someone who entertains people for a living? I just wear a bird hat, and that's all I got. <laughs> Yeah, that's four thousand five, six, seven, eight. So we we managed to get it, and we can of course if if they they do somehow stop this, if they've got a battle fader or something, then I can go into the Samorg link. I can make other stuff. So there we go, five duels down. Let's go ahead to the halfway point, and I'll show you that combo since it uh, hasn't seemed to have been showing up here. All right then, ladies, gentlemen, and others, welcome to the halfway point. This is where I take a few moments to sort of explain the deck more in depth, talk about some of the ratios that haven't been mentioned yet, and also just sort of point out, like, hey, if you've made it this far, if you're liking the show, consider checking out my Patreon. That's, that's how the channel is funded. It's what allows me to buy silly hats, like, like the bird hat that, that you probably like so much. And just, just, uh, you know, improving the show in general keeps, I like food. Do you like food? Well, you could help give me food by giving me a dollar on Patreon. It would certainly help out. And you get a whole bunch of rewards as well. You get on my Discord. There's these sleeves here. Up, oh, I messed it up. Let me try that. There we go. You got these sleeves there. I made those myself. I put some work into them. If you want to download them, use them on your own EDO Pro. Or maybe use that template to buy IRL sleeves. Like maybe on yourplaymat.com with the promo code HARDLEGGAMING10YP. Then you could, you could get that for just $2 on the Patreon. These sleeves and every one I've ever made. But yeah, with, with that out of the way, let me go ahead and explain this. And I guess the best way to start is to just show you that combo that we haven't been able to do. It's going to put Diviner of the Heralds and this. And again, there's a lot of ways to get to this. It also works if you get um, Rebirth of Neftis instead of this. But this is the one card we've been unable to draw so far. 
And let's go ahead into the test settings. Let's just start with a hand of two to show you that, like, that's really all you need and we're not going to shuffle the deck. So there we go. These two cards. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to normal summon Diviner of the Herald. Diviner of the Herald lets you send a fairy from the deck or extra deck to the graveyard. And you can send Herald of the Arclight. When that hits the graveyard, you can search a ritual monster or a spell, which is why... You know, if you open the spell, you search the monster. Since we have the monster, we're searching the spell. This also gains the levels of the monster it sends, so now it's a level 6 tuner. Which, just for, for reference, that's why we're playing the Borolode Savage Dragon. Sometimes, if you get stopped midway through your combo, you can still get another level 2 on the field, because all the Neftis are level 2, and then make a Borolode Savage and at least have a negate. But in this case, we're just going to Ritual Summon... We're going to summon this using Diviner of the Heralds, which is important because if this is tributed, you could summon a level 1 or 2 fairy from the deck. So we'll activate that. You've already seen that before. And our level 1 or 2 fairy is the Trickstar Nightshade. That's why the one of this is in here. This, of course, just like before, you're going to go into the Devotee of Neftis. You're going to use that effect. You're going to summon the Matriarch. Get all three of those. And still, following the same combo as before, we're going to use the two rituals to make the link. The link is going to search us the um, the original Neftis, the Sacred Phoenix, along with getting the field spell, or not the ritual spell, out of the graveyard. And these are just too important to let us destroy things to do stuff. But first, we're going to use the Nightshade. The reason we do this is because there's a Link 1 Trickstar, Trickstar Bloom. Top of the morning to ya! And when this is used as link, uh, link material for a trick star, it summons itself back. So that's why you choose this, because it just comes back in the same way that a lot of the band tuners do, and give you just this extra material. So then we're going to use this Samorg. This can be made with any two monsters, including a winged beast. So you got the link two winged beast. That's two, plus one is three, and there you go. So now we just need four more mo or two more monsters on the field. One of them you can get with Matriarch of Neftis. You can summon back the Connector by blowing up one of the cards in your hand. And then you can bring back the other, the Devotee, by blowing up the other Neftis card in your hand. That's why making the Link is so important. It allows you to get the material no matter what you have so that you can make these. And then you're just going to IP Mask Arena like before. Nightmare Phoenix with these two. And then go into Crusadia Avramax. And then again, during the end phase, you're going to get the... Barrier Statue. They can't Special Summon. They can't attack this. They can only attack Avramax. They can't target anything. And because we made this with IP Mascarena, this can't be destroyed. If it does happen to leave the field for some reason, then you get to non-targeting, spin a card back that your opponent controls... And if they blow that up, then during the standby phase, if nothing else, you're getting Sacred Phoenix of Neftis back. And that was, again, two cards. You're going to be having at least three other cards in your hand. If you open with Bow Baboon and one of the normal summoned monsters, you could get even more. You could get Ixies and stuff. But that's the basic combo. That's what you're trying to do. And then the fact that you have the Apex Avian is just sort of like a backup. If you don't have the means to protect the Stormwinds, you can get this instead. If the Stormwind survives, because this is wind, then during your opponent's end phase, like if they just don't do anything and you still have the, uh, the Samorg and the Barrier Statue, you can then summon the Apex Avian to stop whatever back row they might have. But yeah, that should explain most of the stuff in here, right? Just about everything else is, is trying to get you to that combo. That's why we play the Bow Baboon. That's why we play this, which searches stuff. We play the Matriarch at 2. I find it's good to have a recovery just to have more Neftis in general. That's why I play a second copy. You could probably bump it down to 1 because you only need the 1 for the combo. But then if you do, you're kind of uh, limiting yourself with how this works because it needs to summon a Neftis from your deck. It can't summon it from your hand. And plus, it's just good to have a recovery card in general. 3 gets a little too bricky. I replaced the third copy with this. This is destroy a card in your hand and then add a card from the uh, graveyard to your hand. 
And also, if it's destroyed, then during the next standby phase, you can add this back to your hand. So just good recovery in general can let you get one of your play starters back or one of your ritual monsters if you already have everything else. I mean, obviously, we're playing three of this because we want to get to it. We're playing three of this um, because we often go through all three because of just the way we search. You're using one of these as material and then also summoning one out of the deck. Um, the two rituals, or the ritual rather, the two level eights, the ritual and the non-ritual, we both play one, they're searchable, you don't summon them that often. This, by the way, if we never manage to get it off, it can destroy any number of Neftis on the field or in your hand, and then destroy that many monsters your opponent controls. It's not great destruction, because it's limited exclusively to monsters, you can't get rid of back row, but the fact that on a simplified game state, it can just, like, pop itself plus whatever your opponent has, and just like the non-ritual Neftis, during the standby phase, if this is destroyed, it summons itself back. So you can just keep that, that uh, resource game up for as long as it takes, until eventually your opponent doesn't have anything, you can just attack over it. Either that or you get more resources. Other than that, we've got a whole bunch of searching power. Pre-preparations of rights is an instant way to get to the ritual spell while also giving you just the extra advantage of searching this as well. Unfortunately, the, um, the, the way that pre-preparations of rites works is it searches a ritual spell, and then a monster that's listed on that spell. This can summon any Neftis ritual monster, but it lists these two off, the level 8 and the devotee, in that its effect says if you use them as material, you can destroy a card on the field at resolution. That's that sort of, like, going second extra pop that you can use. You could sometimes use it on Bow Baboon. But that's why it allows you to search out uh, Devotee or the Cerulean Sacred. It doesn't get you this, of course, but again, our combo because of Diviner will search either one of those. If you can just get this, it's worth it. Uh, this does search just any, any low-level ritual. It gets either of these two, and it gets your ritual back out of the graveyard so you can use it again. And the weird thing about this deck is that, like, you're not... As much as you're using the ritual spell to ritual summon, you're mostly using it just as free cards to trigger with your Neftis. Some of them are generic as far as, like, these ones let you destroy any card in your hand, doesn't have to be a Neftis. But this thing's resurrection effect is, like, specifically Neftis. And being able to have this and just bring back a 1200, a level 2, you're pretty good. Overall, I'd say everything I've mentioned is like a standard core. That's the stuff you need to play for this to work. And then everything else is a tech card. The Wicked Eraser, you've obviously seen how it can brick. It doesn't work very well. That's why I have the Ash Blossoms down here, the Torrential Tribute. If you're going to replace these with something, it's probably this. The Dark Hole is kind of on the same level. This, I feel, is really good in the deck because you gain so much advantage from being destroyed. It's nice to have just that board wipe. There are times I'd kind of prefer it to be Torrential Tribute, but uh, I think the spell works better. But it's up to you. You can easily replace this with Lightning Storm, more Hand Traps, Torrential, just anything you want. Doesn't really matter because it's not essential to the deck. Uh, we're playing the one Monster Reborn because we just had one copy left, and I realized that if I got that one, as you saw in Duel Number 2, I could summon that extra monster and allow me to do that combo even if I don't necessarily get Diviner of the Herald if I get a couple other things right. And then there's the one of Last Hope of Neftis. This is just another Neftis card, although it does have the effect that you can target a Neftis card you control and a card your opponent controls and destroy them. So it is back row removal, it does get rid of those face downs. It can also be neat, you get a free search off of this, oftentimes you have so many of the ritual spells or so many ways to get them back that it's nice just to have something else to search. They do also have a trap which might be worth running. It's continuous, it gives all Neftis 300 attack, which is a tiny little boost, it could be useful. And if it's destroyed by a card effect, you could special summon a Neftis from your hand, deck, or graveyard, but destroy it during the end phase. Which, of course, has a lot of synergy with the uh, Sacred Phoenix of Neftis. So, like, you put this, you get the 300 attack during your turn, and then when this comes back during the standby phase, it blows this up, and then you get a free monster, just whatever you want out of the graveyard. And it'll be destroyed, so it'll get its effect and, and stuff like that. As for the extra deck, I feel like these ratios are pretty good. I would looked up a whole bunch of other uh, Neftis profiles when I was doing this, and a lot of them were playing the, the Link 2 at more than one. 
But honestly, I feel like if you have to resolve this more than once, you've probably already lost. There, there's very few situations where you're going to be able to use that more than once. Um, especially, I mean, it can occasionally be good if you need to get this for a follow-up, but summoning this when you've already used the, uh, the regular Phoenix, kind of difficult. Although that is another advantage that the Wicked Eraser offers. Being such a high-level monster, you can use it as the full tribute for Cerulean if need be. But yeah, I think this is fine at one. You've got a couple uh, sort of Garnet cards. Uh, Herald of Arclight, we play it two. Same reason, right? Like, you, you want to resolve this first turn. You might have to play a game where you're top decking later on and you'll resolve it again. So having that second one as a backup is probably good. But I think three is overkill because you're never going to resolve all three Heralds. Um, maybe if you were playing something like Extra Foolish Burial, I saw some people doing this. But in this deck that is so kind of fragile, I think paying half your life points for one search is not really worth it. Um, especially since you can't make like a completely unbreakable board, even if you can guarantee that resolve. It's the same reason I'm not playing something like Gale Dogra. A lot of people were, were saying I should try that out, and it, the life point cost is just too high. Especially because, like, adding stuff like that in means taking out the Wicked Erasers, taking out the Dark Holes, and then your deck has no tech in it. It's 100% investing in that combo, and if you don't get that combo, you have no follow-up whatsoever. This sacrifices some of the consistency, but allows you to play a little bit more and do more things. And that's up to personal preference whether or not that's a good or a bad thing. I know some people just want a deck that does one thing really well, and that's it. Going back to the extra deck, though, we are playing the one level eight. Uh, again, I mentioned that Diviner can go up to six. You've also got, like, twos everywhere, so it's not that difficult to get to eight. Although, usually, if you get four monsters, you probably want to go for, like, an Appaloosa or an Avramax. Although, late game, it, it is possible to make this. If you're wondering about the one Antis, because this is a fairy, you can also send it off for Diviner of the Heralds. Which is a good idea as far as, um, if you... You've got a pretty decent board, maybe you've got like this or the Ritual Monster, and then you top deck Diviner of the Heralds. Being able to just use it to pop a single card on the field is a pretty good tech. It's also nice if you happen to go up against like Dogmatica, where if they're going to make you send something from your extra deck to the graveyard, it could be like, oh, I'll just send an Entis and a Herald and get a search and a pop. Just have a nice time with that. Uh, everything else, we've got the Cicada King for the Bow Baboons. Sky Cavalry Centuria is kind of a late addition, but I think it's really important to have an Ixie you can make when you get any two level twos, because the deck is just full of them. And not only is this something you can make, but it's got non-destruction, non-targeting removal. It attacks into something, can't be destroyed by a battle, and at the end of the damage step you can detach to return that monster to the hand. This is very good for dealing with stuff, that the other Neftis can't deal with. Um, we have some, like, this thing destroys anything by battle, uh, this thing can get up to way high attack, but this is our only real non-destruction removal aside from Nightmare Unicorn, and this targets. So if you're dealing with a Dragoon, you're just kind of screwed. You just want to hopefully stop them before Dragoon gets out there. Now, speaking of this thing, I saw a lot of people not running this. I think it's worth it at one. It's a Link 3 that can be made with two plus monsters, including a Ritual monster. And then it gains effects equal to the number of Rituals that you used for its Link Summon. If you use one, it can't be destroyed by battle. If you use two, it gains 1200 attack and also can't be destroyed by card effects. And if you use three, then it can't be targeted and it gains another 1200 attack. So it can potentially become a 4800 beater that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Again, another out to Dragoon, potentially. Very difficult to make, although, like, getting Conductor of Neftis automatically gets you another Devotee. So, this by itself is two-thirds of the way. And even if you could only make it with two, even if you could just make it the 3600, that's still a pretty good boss monster, especially late in the game, if you've already used your Appaloosa, if you've already used your Abramax, Th this can be what you want to go into. Everything else in the extra deck I think is fairly standard. You want to play the Mascarena so you can go into Avramax. You need another Link 2. I chose Phoenix because sometimes you need back row removal. It's nice to have a Link 3 you can go up into. And again, some non-destruction removal. 
And that's really just about everything. All that leaves is the side deck, which is mostly just other cards that I considered putting in but didn't. I already felt cheap enough going with the Samorg combo, so I didn't want to include Excess Code Talker. But you can make this pretty easily. Getting two level 8s on your field, not too difficult, so rank 8 Ixies are a suggestion. Level 8 and level 10 Synchros, both possible because you've got level 8 monsters, level 2 tuners. Very rare, but it might be worth considering. And then there's just a couple other things that get effects where they're popped. People had asked me about these. Nine-Tailed Fox makes tokens when it's popped, which is decent, but like... You can't really do anything with those tokens that you couldn't do with, with other better monsters. Fire King Avatar Garunix was highly suggested. The problem with this is that it creates this cycle where it comes back during the standby phase and wipes your board too. And then you just, like, can't really keep anything on the field, unfortunately. Unlike a deck like Fire Kings, we don't have a whole bunch of, like, normal summonable monsters. We're really reliant on those graveyard things to come out and make this viable. So I don't think that this works unless you're going to make a whole hybrid, like, Fire King Neftis build. And I'm not sure they, they work well enough together. Just because you need all the ritual stuff to make Neftis work. And then this I mentioned briefly. This this has the same effect as the Wicked Eraser. If it's destroyed, it destroys all cards on the field. But you can't summon it because there, you need a field spell. So I, I didn't go with that. You could just as easily put this in here. You could just as easily put Garunix in there. You could put a whole lot of stuff. There, there's a lot of opportunity for any card that gets destroyed to just be able to get that search and then plus off of it. So hopefully that, that answers any questions you might have about the deck, about the combo. If you have more questions, you can always just ask me down in the comments. I do respond to those when I, when I can. It's getting more difficult as I'm getting more popular, but I try my best, darndest. I try my barndest. The be I try, all right? Porky pigging over here. Anyway, let's go ahead, get into the last half of the duels. Five more to go, and let's see if maybe we can get that combo off. Maybe do something a little spicy. <laughs> Alright, duel number six versus Franco23. Perhaps Philip DeFranco? Hmm? Huh? News? And we started with the combo. We could do the whole combo. It just, it just took me explaining it for it to work. And since I already explained it, I'm not sure if I'll do it again, but... You know? Might as well at least show it. Plus, who knows, maybe I'll get interrupted. Let's take this. This deck is really weak to Nibiru. Really weak to most hand traps. You could potentially play, I don't know, some kind of um, cross-out designator. And actually, since I opened with two, I probably could have used the one in my hand, kept that, and then made a, a Borolode Savage Dragon and been much better off. But I'm not used to doing the combo with two heralds. I barely get one! Alright. Matriarch, matriarch. Just doing the same old thing. It's the same old story, same old story, same old song and dance, my friend! Let's search. Give me my bird. Give me back my ritual spell. I want it. Ugh. And then we'll go ahead into... Top of the morning to you. I am Jack Septicai. This does have an effect. It lets your opponent draw a card. Which can be beneficial in Trickstar builds sometimes. Because uh, they, they burn the opponent when they draw cards. But, um... You know, not here. Not unless you feel, if you feel bad for your opponent, maybe you could do that. Let's bring this back. Let's make the, the Ip. And let's bring this back. By using that. And, ba -do -ba -do, there we go. End off with Avramax, and then I can just get the Ritual Spell back. I would have destroyed this if I didn't have pre-preparations of rites in hand. But now I can Normal Summon that, potentially. Alright. Now, if they're playing Liralusks, which are Wind, this does nothing against them. 
Just so you know. The strongest deck in the format, uh, not particularly good. Uh, not, or can just sort of, like, ignore the fact that Barrier Statue of the Storm wouldn't exist. Especially since they can attack directly and then make Zeus and then just wipe your whole board and have a nice day. It's a nice day for them. It's not a nice day for you. Did we get it? Did we do it? It's not the most fun board. There's a reason I've kind of uh, neglected to play some more Bird of Sovereignty up until now. It feels really cheap. It feels like something that might be um, banned at some point. But it's been here for like a year now. It's not really in any big topping decks. So I don't think it's... Oh! Oh, okay. I was like, ah, Cyber Dragons have a way to out this. Except for they can't summon their... Um, their uh, What's it called? Chimera Tech. They have essentially an extra deck Kaiju. They do have a trap that allows them to blow cards up. I'm not sure if it targets, though. If it does, it's not useful against this. And I think, I think that's all they wrote. I mean, if this is Torrential Tribute and I summon something... Wait, no, because I'm going to get the, um... I'm going to get the, the Mist Valley Apex Avian in the end phase. So I can stop one trap if they only got one. If they have two Torrential Tributes, that's when there's a problem. That's when I might be worrying about things. At least it's against Cyber Dragon, though, you know? It's a... It's a deck that prides itself on being able to break boards. So, the fact that I could prevent it from breaking boards, very nice. Ooh, double nice. Yeah, unfortunately this activates, but it can't summon because the Neftis are fire. Or the Neftis... The, the boss monsters are fire. Everything else is wind, so I actually can't summon the Neftis under my own storm winds. Uh, let's go ahead and normal summon this. Let's activate the effect. And we're going to send a, um... What's it called? Ntsst. We're going to send the Ntis. Just pop that dang old back row in case it's, I don't know, Drowning Mirror Force or something. We could just get the game. Yeah, it is that. Banish Cyber Dragons with different levels from your hand field or graveyard. Then destroy an equal number of cards your opponent controls. This destroyed by a card effect. Add a Cyber. So, yeah, we have to negate that. But at least we tried. Um, and then we can... Blow up this in our hand. Oh, we can't make Boreload Savage because we have wind out, but if we didn't, we could make a wind. We could make Appalooza by using everything, but we're just getting more things. The other thing that can potentially stop uh, Avermax is actually a light monster with Honest. They can Honest him and he won't gain his attack because um, he only gains attack against special summoned monsters. Heroes have it out to this as well because they can use Honesty Neos with something like a um, uh, Stratos and just get over this and not have to worry about the effect. Although all that does is out this and it uses their battle phase. So in main phase two, they have to come back. So you have a pretty good option against that. Did we have game three, four, five, six, seven, 76, Fallout 76, dun, dun, dun. No. But yeah, so there's there's the, the ultimate starting hand. That's what you get. And that's kind of why I wanted to show this off. Just because it's nice when you have a rogue deck that can do something that's just completely unfair. Like, that's kind of what makes this rogue. Um, I'm not sure if something like Drytron or Tri, Tri Brigade has an out to this natively. Like, you could potentially steal some games from them by doing this combo... Because I don't think even the most powerful decks really have a way to play through this unless they open with Forbidden Droplet. Um, and it's nice to show something off like that. But yeah, let's go into the next tools and see if we can do something a little more interesting. <laughs> Alright, here we are, the 8th duel versus Carl Blorg. Hi, editor here. You're probably wondering what happened to Duel 7. Well, there is no Duel 7. Joe forgot to record it. He just skipped straight from 6 to 8. And now, he wants me to fix it. 
bloody wanker. Interesting name. Sounds like some kind of orc name or something. We've got the combo, but we're going second. But it's against Holy Knight, which is not the most powerful deck. And we've got our cool combo, which might be worth it depending on what they get. Add a Starry Knight Spell Trap, add a Starry Knight Monster. Um, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a Starry Knight in your graveyard. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the Starry Knight archetype, it's all about Radiant Sendairu. If it's normal, a special summon from the hand, target one card on the field and destroy it. Cannot be destroyed by dark monsters or by a dark monsters effect. And so the whole thing is, um, they just keep bouncing that back and forth. Like they, they summon it and it blows up a card and then they go back. The, the big thing is this is kind of a risk because I have no access to the ritual spell if I don't do this. But I kind of want to, I kind of want to do this effect. So let's hope that they, they don't think it's worth it to Sandaru this. This zero attack monster. Okay. So then we can use the effect. Destroy a card in your hand and add a Neftis monster from your deck to your hand. Please let this go through. Please. I'm just a, no, I'm just a searchy boy. I just want to search. Sadness. Feel one light fairy, and if you do add... Well, at least they've blown it up, which means I'll get the search next turn. That's cool, and it's on the field, so I can blow everything up. Starry Night Blast. Return one level seven, negate the effect, and if you do, destroy the card. Ripperoni. Welp. Let's hope I don't die. I've risked all and lost then. If I had been able to completely destroy the entire entire field, it would have been awesome. But it didn't work. Astel. Quick effect. Target a light monster you control. Tribute it. Special summon a level 7 light dragon from your hand. So they can attack for 18, 500, then tribute itself, get out the 25. I really like the idea of this deck of bouncing the dragon back and forth. But a lot of this stuff really needed to be, like, continuous in order for this to work. You needed something that let you bounce it every turn, not something that required you to tribute off a monster or activate a one-off spell trap. Because after, like, one turn, you're just out of... you're out of steam. So they got this, so if it's another one of those, they can negate the... the Diviner. But I don't necessarily need it. I'll have something else. Because, since that was destroyed... Ooh, you're just tempting me. Just getting me another one. I can search my ritual spell. There we go. So, what do I have to worry about? It can't be destroyed by a dark monster. I don't have dark monsters, really. Or that's a dark monster. So actually, the Wicked Eraser can't destroy this. Um, uh, let's normal summon Diviner of the Herald. Let's use that effect. Hoo-ha! Solemn Strike. All right. Good thing I didn't try to do this. They could have just negated everything I loved and held, held dear. Uh, let's go ahead and activate the pre-prep. Let's get this. And then we can, yeah, I think we want to summon this using this. Hello, nice to meet you. Give me a devotee. Give me a matriarch. Or do I just want a phoenix that can, no, the phoenix isn't big enough. Um, actually, I do want the phoenix. In this particular instance, I want the Phoenix because what we're going to do is we're going to make the Sacred Phoenix of Neftis. We're going to activate that effect to search, but since we've already got this on the field, we're going to get the level 8. And we're going to get the Ritual Spell out of the graveyard. Haha. -ha. Uh, what does this do? During your main phase, you can reveal one light, yada yada. 
Your opponent activates a Carter effect. You can special summon a light level 7 from your hand. Okay, so they do have a continuous thing. So now I can just ritual summon this. Using this. Hello, nice to meet you. Um, and then I can blow up this card in my hand to blow up your Starry Night Dragon. Fire Monster. Mine's bigger. 25 meet 3,000. And then we'll just attack. And there you go! And then this, I don't think we've gotten to the point of using it. We might not if they surrender because I've got 3,000 right here. Oh, they've got graveyard effects. All right. But during the standby phase, if this was destroyed, it, it summons itself back. So even if they wipe my field, I'm getting this back and I can always discard the Wicked Eraser. <laughs> In fact, I might do that just for fun and profit. Just to have myself a merry little Christmas, you know? Let's just... Why haven't we yet? Let's go ahead. Let's summon this back. By discarding the Wicked Eraser. You can at least see it resolve once. Goodbye, world! Bye-bye. It's a bit of fun time. I annihilate the universe. Um, then we activate re, re, Devotee. Destroying that. So you can attack for 1,200. <laughs> we at least have something on the field and we got a little bit of advantage of it. Granted, we could have probably just won, but uh, it's nice to get everything off their field so they just have absolutely... Oh, they do have a continuous. Okay. Maybe I underestimated them. It just sucks that, uh, you know, once your dragon gets in the graveyard, you can't do shit about fuck. What? Okay. Now it's really over. Because everything got destroyed, which means that, like, standby phase, I'm just, but he came back. That's Neftis, is, but he came back, the archetype. Or I guess, but she came back. Because it's all priestess and women and stuff. They worship the big space chicken. It's just a fun time. So yeah, at least we got to see it work. Wasn't against the best deck. Didn't need to be done, but we done did it anyway. And that's why you come to the hard leg experience. Let's go ahead to the ninth duel and... I don't know what else we got to show off at this point, but we'll try. Ah, oh, featuring Dante of the Devil May Cry series. Fortunately, we went Paper Strat, and they went Scissor Strat, which means we're probably not going first. We have access to our Ritual Spell, which is good. We can get a non-targeting pop and potentially do stuff. This is not a bad hand if my opponent has, like, one or two disruptions. We can potentially play through one or two disruptions. Ooh, Pot of Duality. Oh, no. Oh, no. Subterrors. Oh, I do not want to live through a whole grind game. Oh, they're going to outgrind me at every turn. They're going to annihilate my soul. Hopefully, they just don't get... Did you not get a... Did you not... Oh, there it is. There, there he is. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh... So tempting. So they've 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 pretty much guaranteed to have the um the fiendus, which can negate stuff. The question is, do I want to try to run out this? Hope I can get that. Save this. Uh, I probably just want to make them try to use that on this. This is like a must negate kind of thing, especially if I end up being playing like Drytron. Like right now, they have no idea what I'm playing. So if they think I'm on some fairy shit, they're probably going to want to negate that. Okay, well, we got the Ash Blossom. Um, which would have been used for this. Let's try the pre-prep. The pre-prep resolves. 
Let's go for these. The question is, will I be able to ritual summon? If they have a negate, this is like the best time to use it. Fortunately, if they do negate here... Oh, okay. Nice. So, let's use this. Summoning... Yeah, we want to use this. And then destroy one card on the field at the resolution of the ritual summon. So now they can't negate anything, unless one of these is a solemn or something. Which, I mean, they might be. Who can say? Alright. Unfortunate. Um... Let's go ahead, we're going to attack for 2,500. What is this? Okay, it has to be... So the thing is, because this is a level 2 tuner, and we got another level 2, we can hard make the Herald of Arclight. And not only will that be a negate, but if they destroy it, then I'll get to be able to search a ritual card. Which might be worth it. The other alternative is to pop this and the back row, because this says when it's popped during my opponent's standby phase, I can destroy up to three Neftis cards from my hand, field, and graveyard. Or hand, field, and deck. So I can destroy, like, one of these and one of these and get the ritual spell and a free monster next turn, which might be worth it. Um, I think I want to hold on to this. I think we'll go ahead and, yeah, we'll just make the Herald of Arclight. It's only got a thousand attack. If they summon anything, they can just attack over it. But it represents an agate that, once destroyed or used, allows me to get a ritual monster or ritual spell. And because this can summon... Oh, okay. Activates when sent to the graveyard, baby! Uh, I think because this can search the monsters... I'm going to get the Ritual Spell. And then we'll just pass our turn. Not the best turn. We haven't established a board, but we've managed to slightly out-resource our opponent. They have one less card than us. Cave Clash. At the start of the damage, if this attacks face-down defense position, the Sub-Terror... Deals battle damage, you can target a sub-terror card in the graveyard and add it to the hand. So they get the Guru back, they can't summon it this turn, but they're gaining their advantage. And then what? Got one other card in hand. Oh, well, that was unfortunate. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think we have to run this out. We'll go ahead and activate that effect. Try to, at least. Is it another Ash Blossom? I don't have to destroy until the effect goes through, so that if they negate it, I don't get the destroy. Which in this case is good, because I probably want more resources. Yeah, it's just another dang old Ash Blossom. Alright, in that case... I can... Activate this. And I think what we want to do is destroy this... And the cave clash, so they can't get anything back. I'll take the damage. That doesn't bother me so much. As much as, like... Because they can use that to get back the, the Fiendus every time they attack. 3200 is a lot. But unless they've top-decked the one Fiendus, I should be in pretty good condition. We'll see. This is really going to have to do a whole lot of work, I tell you what. Although they can flip it face down and then just attack into it. And if that's a solemn strike or something. What? Oh, I don't have any more Neftis spells. I've drawn all of them. Um... What would I bring back if I could bring back something? I really need to search. The search is the better one. So let's try this again. Yeah, but they're just going to flip it face down. Ugh. 
And even though this is the 2,000 defense, this can attack over it. Now they're getting stuff every turn. Yep, unfortunately, I really need like a Dark Hole or just any of my Ritual. If I get either of my Ritual monsters, I'm off to the races. Either of my level 2 ones or any of the things that searches them. But at this point, I think, unfortunately, they've just got the tempo in their favor. Now they've got one more card than me and one of those negate stuff. And now they're going to be able to choose something else. So I'm just going to chalk this up to a loss and go ahead. But uh, if we manage to pull it out, I'll come back. Oh, especially not with the Solemn Johnson. <laughs> Here we are in the tent duel versus Yumo. I haven't heard about that Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist. I think we've done pretty good, though. I think the only thing that I really wanted to do that I haven't been able to do is summon Appalooza and maybe this thing. Summoning that thing would be cool. Not sure if we're going to be able to do it against um, Dragon Maids. They do have the one negate, although with prep and pre-preparation of rights. We could probably destroy it with the Devotee and the Ritual Summon after baiting out the negation with Diviner of the Herald. Also, it's just weird, like, Preparation of Rites is such a sinister card. It's like all these, like, evil ritual people gathering together. And then pre-prep is like, yes, and they will feed spaghetti to a goofy-looking bird. It's like, I guess that's, they're just fattening up. That's Ritual Raven, by the way, which was the first card that was like, you can use this as the entire tribute for a ritual. Uh, okay, so... You can negate the activation. If you do destroy that card, also return this card to the extra deck and special summon a house. All right. So let's see if I can get them to negate the uh, pre-prep. Because if I could get the whole combo off. No? All right. Um, yeah, I think we just want to go for this. And let's just fire that off, shall we? Because we've got the preparations of rights. All right, you have been a fool, we'll use itself for itself, which means at resolution we can just pop you. Just give it the old pop and stop. And I think I could still do this at this point. Get the matriarch out here, it's just going to be in a slightly different order. Now we can diviner of the herald because the pop is gone. And they surrendered. They knew what was coming, so they baked a surrender cake. But we, we could still walk through this, right? Like, Diviner sending the, um... Honestly, at this point, I think what I would do is send Entis and blow this up. Then I could use this to get the Conductor. The Conductor can be Ritual Summoned with that. So it'll come out, it'll get the third Devotee from the deck. And then, or could get the level 8, we could get the big, big, uh, link. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Get the big link, tributing this, that would get me the, um, the trick star. And then we could use all three of our links to make the big, huge, mega space chicken. The one that we didn't get to summon, but that I would have liked to have summoned. And then the rest we could just make whatever links, we'll, we'll find a way with the rest of them to, to get into something we could use Apex Avian with. But that would have been what we, what we ended on, if we got to play. Unfortunately, they scooped it up. Neftis, too scary. Too scary to play against if you're a Dragon Maid player. Let's go ahead to the end screen. <laughs> so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. KFC, the Konami Fried Chicken, went 8 in 10. Much better than I was expecting. Much better than this deserves, honestly. Probably better than real KFC deserves, if we're being honest. Never been too much of a fan. They, they, they've got a couple okay things. But either way, uh, kind of a neat experiment of a deck. When I first started this, I didn't think it would work. You'll have to let me know what you think about using the combos like the Samorg stuff. Uh, in some ways, it feels really nice to see a deck that uses Winged Beast that can put so many monsters on board, be able to make something. And at the same time, it feels kind of cheap to end, to have a, to, to, to have a Neftis deck that doesn't end on any Neftis cards. But hopefully I showed off kind of the power of what the Neftis can do, their toolbox. I think we use just about everything, both their ritual spell, having that cool pop, 
We didn't really get to use this thing all that much, but it's nice to bring out every once in a while. Just the recurring of the Sacred Phoenix. Just a lot of neat stuff. So let me know whether or not you appreciated that, whether or not you'd like to see more weird takes like this on old decks, or if you think I should be looking towards newer decks. I think that's what I'm going to try to do next time, although I might have some Patreon requests. It's the start of a new month. I'll have to look into it. Either way, until then, good luck and have fun. Hey there, fellow chicken enthusiasts. Welcome to the tail end of the video. This is where I take a moment to ritually praise all the patrons who made this show possible, but especially the $25 and higher patrons who show true devotion to the cult. I mean, I mean the cause, the patron. Anyway, their names are Davon Crushin, Tiberius Kane Moriarty, Yellow, Cat Monarch, Yami, Zero Fifteen O Three, Austin Glover, Chris W, Death's Dancer, Montry, Chris Kessler, Dancing Joker, Diotic, Matt, Muffin Fiend, Nathan, Nerozard Twenty Two, Nightfang, Penumbra Terna. Kirvin, Quintingent, and Trevor F. If you'd like to join the other worshippers and have your name eternally preserved at the end of a video, the Patreon link is on the screen and listed down in the description. There's a bunch of other rewards too, so if you only got a dollar, it's still worth checking out. This episode's secret question of the day is, who do you think makes the best fried chicken? Let me know down in the comments, and until next time, stay frosty, Legos.